Hey everybody, it's Carl Krenzel with Sell More Homes. Now, I just had a couple quick tips for you. Eight quick tips specifically on how to sell a luxury home. You know, it's been my experience over 23 years of doing this business that there's a lot of significant differences when you're starting to talk about selling luxury property. You can't treat it like everything else. And I wanted to share these tips that I've picked up over the past few years that I thought might help you today. So point number one, determine really or identify, if you will, the potential buyers for the property. It's really critical if you understand that there's not going to be that many buyers for a property of this type, luxury type property, then you've got to identify who specifically it is that you're trying to target. You know, I always recommend you go to the U.S. Census data. Uh, the tax records many times will give you a lot of that information about who the typical buyers are in that area. I'm sorry, who the typical owners are in that area. And they'll tell you a lot about who the buyers are typically are. That way you can go ahead and Facebook target, Instagram target, or however you choose to target these people. Uh, you'll certainly want to market to everybody, but specifically pay attention to the people who are able to buy the property and where they're coming from. The next thing I wrote down was relocation centers. Understand that no matter where you are, I mean, I'm here in Tucson and we have people coming to us really from Chicago, from California, from Washington, Oregon, and those are primarily the places that people come to us from. Um, in your marketplace, there's you know certain areas that they come to. So make sure that you're marketing to those areas as well so that you can make sure that you make the most of every opportunity. The second thing you wanna do when you're trying to sell your luxury property is understanding that price is critical. You know, it's true that luxury buyers have a lot of cash, they have a lot of money to throw at the problem. Does not mean, however, that they're stupid. They're certainly not foolish and they're not gonna overpay for property. When you think about it, you, very, you want to pay critical attention to the list price and sales price ratio of a property in your area. Uh, homes in that area typically do not sell for wide variances in price, you know, five, 10%. It's very odd that it'll be that much. Usually it's only two to 4% at the most. So check the list price, the sales price in your area, and that'll help you to discover how much you should put as far as wiggle room in. The other thing I wrote down is understand your days of market relative to the area. You know, if you're trying to put your home on the market as a luxury homeowner or as a luxury agent, you know, you have to understand that there is a difference in this market. It's going to take a little bit longer depending on how you price it. Certainly some areas they can sell very quickly for Tucson, for example, example, Alta Vista, you know, uh, selling an average of 45 days at the time of this recording, which is very quick. Uh, for this time of year. Uh, but then of course there's other times of year where times uh, are much different. So in your area, it's critical for you as an agent to understand specifically what the market is selling and how long it's taking for people to get those prices. The third thing I wrote down was market timing. Understand that the timing is critical when you're trying to sell a property. You know, the time of year I wrote down, is it the summer or the winter? You know, summertime, you, you know, you, in Tucson, for example, it may not be a very good time to sell. I mean, it's 110 degrees outside. There's not a lot of people who are here. You know, on the other hand, the wintertime might be a pretty good time for us. But maybe you're in a different area of town, a different area of the country. Maybe it's like Pittsburgh, Ohio, something along those lines where it's more of a traditional market. When you think about it that way, you know, the wintertime may not be such a good time for you. And the spring might be better. You know, the school seasons, a lot of times for people in that area, uh, in this luxury market, they're trying to make sure that they get their home uh, in the right area for the school. They're very close to a particular type of school, maybe of a private school or a basis school or, or some sort of advanced school, magnet school, when you think about it. You know, you have to understand what the school systems and the seasons are for that time of year. Is it, is it full year? Is it half year? What, what's the season for that school? The other thing I wrote down is multiple listing service problems. You know, if the property's been listed multiple times, or if you've had it for sale multiple times, you know, it can uh, accumulate this sour effect, right? So you wanna make sure that when you're pricing the property and putting it on the market, you wanna time it properly so that you don't have multiple exposures to the market, which ultimately will end up in you resulting less for your home. The fourth thing I wrote down is effective online marketing. You know, I really got this at the fourth part. I mean, a lot of people like to think that online marketing is the key to selling your property. And it's true that online marketing has come a long way in selling property. You know, I wrote down, you know, you want to make sure that you have luxury homes, uh, 
you know, they, they get marketed differently. You want to make sure you write that down because when you think about this, you know, if you've got a, a manufactured home, and I've sold plenty of them, trust me, you know, that requires one level of marketing. If, on the other hand, you've got a million dollar property or, or a two million dollar property and, and you're trying to expose it, there's just a very small strata of people who can afford this type of property and the way they can afford it is very limited. And so when you think about it, you know, you want to be very, very crystal clear about who you're marketing to and how it presents itself. You know, the photographs and the presentation that you use. This is all uh, an enormous key factor when you're trying to sell the property. It has to look a certain way because, you know, it's not just the MLS. It's not just the local. It's really a global outreach. You know, you're really trying to appeal to a, an entirely different class of buyer. 23 years ago when I started in real estate, you know, the buyer for your home could be just down the street. You know, nowadays we're talking about halfway around the world. The buyer for your home could be in Abu Dhabi right now. They could be in Qatar. They could be uh, China. They could be uh, Japan. They could be anywhere. They could be in California. They could be right here in Tucson. You never really know. And when you think about it, you want to be able to market them uh, effectively. And an online presence is certainly part of that. Your photography and video on point number five, I wrote down, you know, busy professionals you know, when they're looking to buy a property, they do not have a lot of time. They simply do not have the time to go through properties and take a look at them ad nauseum. They'll usually hire an agent like myself to come through and take a look at it first on their behalf to make sure it meets certain criteria. You know, if you're trying to sell a luxury property, when you think about it, when there's hundreds of homes to choose from in your marketplace, and, and literally, I, I don't care where you are, even if you're in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, you know, they've still got a lot of property to choose from. And when there's hundreds of homes to choose from, buyers' natural inclination is to just start picking out homes and saying no, 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 based on the photography, based on the layout, based on the multiple listing service, based on the way it's presented. And so it's critical that you pass this first sniff test, if you will. I really appreciate you sticking with me and I'm going to go as fast as I can. Point number six, if you've liked this so far, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, maybe even share this video, hopefully with somebody who's it's been helpful to. Maybe even drop a comment in the comment section. Point number six, aggressive online marketing. I'm sorry, offline marketing. We talked about the online marketing, the need for your, your photography, your videography, your, your layouts, everything to be pristine so it looks good for the customer. But when you think about it, your offline marketing has to be just as aggressive. You know, you have to think about contacting your referral centers. I mean, the people, as I mentioned, who are going to be buying in that area, the agents and people who are working in those, those areas like Chicago, and for my case, like Chicago, or uh, agents in Washington, Oregon, California, the feeder sites that are coming here to Tucson. You know, if you're an agent, a luxury agent, you wanna make sure that you contact those people uh, for their referrals and people who are coming to their area and let them know about the properties that you have. Maintain those relationships because you'll be sure to go ahead and find out about the next buyer that's being relocated uh, to your area. You want to make sure your outgoing contacts are going to the demographic targets who are likely to buy your property. Now look, like I said before, you want to try and market the property to everybody and anyone who has the money to afford it. Okay, but you have to understand that it's going to be critical that you spend your marketing dollars and your effort and energy, your time, on the people who can and actually most likely will buy it. And by using the Census Bureau information, a lot of the other information you find on your tax information, you can go ahead and target that information very precisely these days. Uh, also, aggressive lead follow-up. Remember, I mean, people give you their name and number for a reason. Call them. Right? I mean, if, if they're looking to sell or buy a, a luxury property, make sure you give them a call and talk to them because, I mean, that's really the problem with the society today. We don't really talk anymore. It doesn't hurt to either just send them a quick text or give them a quick call and talk to them about the properties that they're looking to buy or sell. Point number seven, you know, avoid open houses. I know a lot of agents and brokers are going to really dislike me for saying this, but the, re the real truth is you need to avoid holding an open house if you've got a luxury property. Now, you know, admittedly, if you've got a property that's uh, a median priced property, a lower end priced property, I understand the logic of having an open house. On the other hand, if you've got a luxury property, you really wanna be very, very careful and judicious about who you let in the property. You know, when you think about it, 
you, the open house unnecessarily exposes the property to risk, you know, risk from theft, risk from damage, uh, risk from a bunch of other unnecessary things that don't need to have to happen. You know, even really when you think about it, a broker open house, in my opinion, is really kind of questionable because when you think about it, a lot of times people just come through and see a lot of houses and it just seems like a great opportunity to, to drink wine and, and have some cheese and the next thing you know, somebody's got something spilled on the floor and the homeowner, you know, has got this, this, this stain on their floor and that, that's just not a place you really want to be. You know, when you think about it, Regardless if you're a homeowner or a, a, an agent who's in the luxury market, when you think about it, you want to show properties to pre-approved buyers. It's simple. Simply ask, right? Have you been to a lender? Right? Have you been to a lender? Do you happen to have a copy of your pre-approval? Because you want to know who's coming in the house and why. You want to know that they've been with somebody. And trust me, anybody who's a serious buyer, if they're a cash buyer, then fine, they'll be able to prove funds. If they are a, uh, in some way contingent on a loan, they'll have certainly no problem showing you that they're a legitimate buyer. You know, when you think about it, if you've got a listed property, it's certainly not a bad idea to have every showing accompanied by the listing agent, especially if you've got an upper end luxury property. You know, it certainly doesn't hurt. The, the, the listing agent can stay out of the way, if nothing else, and, and, and ensure that no damage is done to the property. That's really what we're trying to do is ensure that there's no damage and ensure the security of the property because those two items are paramount. You know, finally, the eighth thing, if you stuck with me this long, the eighth thing I wrote down, understand how to sell luxury property. You know, when you think about it, luxury property is a lot different than your average real estate. I mean, luxury real estate, you're selling an experience. You know, you're selling a, an experience with the property. And, and people buy in this price range, and people buy these properties to avoid problems, okay? When you think about it, they live in certain areas, maybe behind a gated community, maybe with a home is brand, brand new or, or, or a brand new built or recently built a certain way. You know, when they buy these properties, they buy them to avoid problems, okay? So be a good seller, be a good realtor, and be solution oriented. You know, a lot of people tend to, you know, have this mindset that in negotiations you need to be the, the knuckle drag out. <laughs> no, it can't be that way. You have to work together, right? And when you think about it, flexibility is the key. So listen, I really appreciate you guys sticking in and listening to the video for me. I hope that this was helpful for you. You know, I'd like to know what kind of challenges you're facing in the marketplace and tell me in the contents below. I'd like to hear from you and has, as always, have a powerful sales day. Bye-bye.